Today, we are going to take a look at the Moto Tag GPS tracker. Some of you asked me about reviewing it uh, when I actually did this video here saying not to buy it right now because I didn't think it was ready. But many of you asked me to get it unboxed and set it up and check it out. So today we're going to do that. And I also have another device that is a Google Find My Device network capable. And so stick around because we're going to check it out too. So let's get to it. Okay, so after I published that video talking about the Moto Tag and how I didn't think you should buy it right now because I didn't think it was ready, I had several people wanted me to go ahead and unbox it and test it. So today that's what we're going to do. We're going to unbox this device, take a look at it. I'm going to set it up in the um, app and we'll kind of check it out and see. I have another trip coming up next month that we're taking a family vacation to Mexico. So I plan on taking this device, the Pebble Clip, the original Samsung Smart Tag, and the Samsung Smart Tag 2 with me on that trip to test them. I also have another device today that I'm going to show you that I'm going to take along, but stick around because we're going to get to that here in just a minute. But the biggest reason why I said that this device wasn't ready yet and why you should wait is because Google has not implemented the ultra wideband capability yet into the Find My Device network or app. This is the only device that I know of currently that actually has ultra wideband support. So Motorola built it in. It's actually functioning on the device, but Google is not using it. Again, that's kind of ridiculous. So uh, we're going to still check it out, though. I think um, it still has some merit as a, a, you know, a Bluetooth GPS tracker, and we're going to see how well it works. Now, a few features that this has that some of the others don't is it has a button on it that you can, it's supposed to be programmable for a couple different things. One is you can tap it to find your phone, right? So it like reverse finds your phone. You're supposed to be able to tap it twice to be able to use it with the camera and make the device take pictures. But I've seen a lot of people posting that it's not working. So we're gonna test that out. We're gonna see if it actually is working or uh, if there's some issue. Apparently it's not actually functioning the way it's supposed to function. So we're going to find out. The only other thing that I'm not really too keen on is that you have to have an accessory device to put this into if you want to carry it around on your keychain or strap it to something because it does not have a hole to attach it to anything. So there's no way to, you know, put it on your key ring. Now, I personally don't carry any trackers on my keys. So to me, it's not a huge deal. Like this device here, I could just put in my luggage, which I plan on doing. But as you can see, you know, both the old smart tag, the Pebbly Clip, and of course we know the Samsung Smart Tag 2 has got that big ring. So you can attach any of those to key rings, collars, straps for your luggage, all kinds of different things, but this you cannot. There's a lot of accessories available for you to be able to put this into, so I mean, you have some options. Another nice feature is this is IP67 dust and waterproof rated, uh, which is nice. It carries the same waterproof rating as the Smart Tag 2, and so that's a really good bonus. So let's unbox it and see what we got inside. This is actually one of the first Motorola devices that I've ever owned outside of a phone. That's what you get. And it's actually a little smaller than I expected. I don't know why I thought it was going to be bigger, but I did. Okay, so that just pops out. They do give you a little instruction manual in there. Kind of doubt I'm going to need that. So that's the device. And you can see it's small. If you compare it to the Pebble Bee, you can see that it's significantly smaller in diameter. But I do like the size. Uh, I think it's nice. It's compact. Feels like, you know, premium build. It doesn't feel cheap. Now, this device here, unlike the Pebble Bee, so the Pebble Bee has its own network and it has its own app. However, you can't have the Pebble Bee in the Pebble Bee app and the Google Find My Device app at the same time. It's one or the other. My understanding is this, you can do both because you need the app to be able to configure some of the additional features that this has. 
So Motorola has a Moto Tag app that you can get from the um, Play Store, and you'll be able to configure some of the additional settings for this device. So I'm going to do a little screen recording on my phone, and we're going to kind of walk through the setup on this. Supposedly, you're just supposed to be able to pull that little plastic tab right there, and it automatically prompts you to pair it. So we'll see. I also see other people saying that it doesn't pair the first time. You have to go through and kind of reset the app and go through all that. Uh, again, it shouldn't be that complicated. It should just work, but we'll see. Okay, so as you can see on my phone, I've already got the app installed. Uh, it's just this Moto Tag app right here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let's get it paired up. So, so allow Moto Tag. Yes, allow. And I'll go ahead and allow data sharing. So now it says finding your tag. So let's pull the plastic tab. Tab is pulled out. Yeah, see, this is what other people were saying, too, that it just didn't seem like it wanted to pair quickly. Okay, so let's end that. We're going to go back in here. Oh, look, <laughs> as soon as I close the app, uh, now it wants me to connect. Crazy. So let's connect. Actually, I think that's the Google. It's, yeah, that's the Google Find My Device app that's doing that. So maybe you have to pair that first. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so that was super fast, super easy. And that's the Google Find My Device app, as you can see right here. So let's open the app. And so now you can see where it says Moto Tag. Um, of course, it shows uh, my house right there. So yeah, it's locating correctly, which I would think it would. I'm going to name this to Rob's Moto Tag. And I'm going to put bag because that's what it will be. And so, yeah, that's good. So, okay. Um, again, it works perfect with Google. Let's see if I can get it actually in the actual app. But as you can see now, I'm going to find my device. I have the Pebble Bee Clip. I have my Moto Tag. Of course, my watch and my phone are both part of the Google Find My Device, uh, which is nice. So let's open Moto Tag. Oh, so yeah, now it's in here. See, that's crazy. You should be able to actually, you know, use the app to pair it not just the google find my device but that's okay i mean no big deal so let's tap on this here and find my device locate on map so that goes to the google find my device app interesting let's see what it sounds like it's not very loud that's another thing i had people mention that it wasn't very loud see my my understanding was you were able to program the the button but i don't see a way of doing that so, because when you click more, uh, of course, it gives you like the tag name, the model, the firmware. See, it says double press the button on your tag to play a sound on your phone. It's not working. Maybe if I lock my phone, let's see. It's not working. See, th this is the kind of thing that just frustrates me in that the simple features that they say, you know, that it has, they don't work. They just don't work. It's just really frustrating. A oh, ringer volume. Okay, so you can set the volume for the ringer in the Find My Device app, but you can't set it in the Moto Tag app. Again, weird. So let's say hi, and let's see what that sounds like. Let's go back here, play a sound. It's not really that much louder. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. So honestly, it, it it already is a little disappointing to me in how you know the volume for the ringer is really low. Now, of course, once ultra wideband becomes available in the app and it's able to take advantage of that, I don't know that you're really gonna need the ringer because the way the ultra wideband allows that augmented reality and the really precise location finding. Uh, but we'll have to see how that is actually, you know, implemented and how it works once they get, you know, functional. But I've read about the fact that you're supposed to be able to use this like to take, you know, pictures with your camera as like a little remote. Um, it, apparently, the double clicking to find my phone doesn't work, which I don't understand. Let's try it again. Yeah, nothing. Uh, so I don't I don't understand, you know. Why does it have to be that complicated? Because to find your phone actually 
you know, is probably a really functional for some people that lose their phone. I know that um, I have some family members that will occasionally lose their phone. They'll drop it somewhere. It's stuck in a steep cushion of the couch or something like that. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to actually utilize that feature, uh, but it doesn't work. Okay, so what I didn't realize is I had to turn on the feature for the double press to find my phone. So as you see here in my app, you have to actually click on locate your phone and then you have to enable that functionality. And then once that's turned on, then the phone will ring. Let's turn it up. Yeah, medium to high doesn't really sound much different, but so then you can swipe down and you can see there where it says um, to stop ringing, press the volume key or tap stop ringing below. Hit the volume key, stops ringing. So that's easy enough. Um, that was my mistake for not realizing I had to enable that. And so now that feature does work, but I still have no option to be able to take a picture with double pressing it. It only rings the phone. I might have to do a little research on that and see maybe if there's a, an update or something to enable that. I don't know. The Samsung app to me, again, this blows away all of the other devices I've tested as far as a tracker. And I don't know that you know Google's going to even be able to catch up to Samsung and Apple because both their products work flawlessly they're easy to pair super functional and you know google's just behind the ball on this one in my opinion so again not really much to this um it did pair pretty fast actually with the google find my device app not the motorola moto tag app it doesn't have any way of configuring the double tap like i had read it did but maybe that's a feature they're going to enable later yeah so we'll have to see how it tracks as far as when we go on vacation next month how accurate it's going to be because i'm going to have it in the same luggage that i'm going to have these and so we'll see but in my opinion um it's disappointing it you know all these devices are like 30 bucks i mean so it's not a lot of money i mean they're all fairly inexpensive but you're just not getting the functionality that i think it should have Again, when you look at the Samsung and Apple and how they have their systems configured and their devices configured, man, they just they, they pair instantly. They work flawlessly. They're very accurate. Of course, the Samsung is ultra wideband capable. The Samsung app does use ultra wideband. Yes, the Apple and Samsung devices only work with their respective phones. So, you know, the Apple AirTag only works with iOS devices. The Samsung SmartTag only works with Samsung devices. Whereas the Motorola, the Pebblebee, they'll work with any Android phone. So let's move on. The other device that I purchased is a Chipolo device. And this is the Chipolo One Point, which is a little confusing because as you see here, they have several different like devices and they all say Chipolo One, but there's Chipolo One, Chipolo One Shot, Chipolo One Point, and they don't like work cross-platform, meaning one only works with the Chipolo app, one works with iOS, one works with android but like you can't use the android in the chipolo app and see to me it's confusing because i almost bought the wrong one i almost bought the chipolo one instead of the chipolo one point because this is a different device the other one doesn't work with the google find my device network which is weird um, so be careful if you're gonna buy the chipolo make sure you get the chipolo one point and that way you won't have any confusion when you go to set up in your app because it's not working. So we're going to unbox this real quick and then we're going to set it up in the app as well and we'll see how it functions. Now, a couple things on this device. I think this is actually um, 
not worth the 30 bucks to be honest with you, but I had some people that wanted me to test it, so I'm testing it. One good thing, I suppose, is you don't have to have a third-party app. It's just straight up Google Find My Device. So you don't have to have like a the Chipolo app in order to get it configured. One of the negatives, there is no reverse finding your phone. But this doesn't even have it. Like, it's not even possible. The battery lasts a year, according to Chipolo, which is on par with other devices other than the Samsung SmartTag 2. That device can last like... 500 and some odd days it's insane long time now here's another drawback on this here this is only ipx5 splash resistant rated so for example if you drop this like let's say it's on your key ring you drop your keys in a puddle you might end up damaging this device whereas the other devices are you know waterproof ip67 rated so why they only made this ipx5 for splash resistant i don't know because if you're putting it on your key ring, how many times have you dropped your keys in the water? I know I have as I've been like running to my car and it's raining and, you know, I dropped my keys on the ground. But I don't know. I think that's, again, a bad choice. And, of course, then you have the confusion with the different Chipolo products. None of them work with, you know, the other apps. You have to use, you know, each one with its specific app that it works with. Uh, I would think kind of like the Motorola, how the Motorola works with the Moto Tag app and the Find My Device app. Of course, the Pebblebee, it's kind of the same way. You can't use the Pebble Bee device in the Pebblebee app, only in the Find My Device app. I really don't understand why they did that. That's so confusing, and it's going to confuse a lot of people. So let's get this unboxed and let's check it out. Simple packaging, which I like simple packaging. I don't think packaging needs to be complicated. I think some manufacturers get a little crazy with their packaging. Okay, so here's a Chipolo device. And again, it's on par as far as size goes. Uh, it is bigger than the Motorola, but it's about on par with the Pebble Clip. And of course, the original Samsung Smart Tag, you know, it's kind of a, a different design, but it's about the same, you know, overall circumference. So according to Chipolo, you're just supposed to be able to click it Next to your phone, the Google Find My Device app will see it and pair it. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to open the Find My Device app, and we're going to click it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Look at that. See, that's how it should work, right? Super fast. So let's say connect. And see, it says Chipolo one point. It has to be the Chipolo one point. If you get one of the other ones, it's not going to work. So agree and continue. And there it is. And of course, it's tracking the same as the others. So let's come in here. I want to rename it. I always rename my devices. I like to put my name in front of it because let's say I get one that's for my wife, then I would name it, you know, my wife's name, which device goes with which user and or, you know, luggage, bag, whatever they're attached to. So I want to say bag on that as well. Much louder than the Motorola. That sounds a lot better than the Motorola device. The Motorola, like, you almost couldn't hardly hear it. And I think if it were, like, inside luggage, there's a chance you might not hear it at all. But see, this has, like, no other features. Like, this is it. You put this on key ring. You put this in your bag or whatever the case may be. And you just simply use this to track. It can't reverse find your phone. There is no button that you can use to click to do any kind of functionality. Um, yeah, super basic. Again, I'm not even sure this is worth the $30 that I paid. <laughs> so I don't know. We're going to see how well it tracks though. Uh, Chipolo does have their own network, but this is not going to be part of it because it's specific for the Google find my device network. So you can't use the existing Chipolo network that's already in place. It would be nice to be able to combine the two, right? Because then if you have Chipolo users that aren't part of the Find My Device, but that can actually track this device, then you would have that additional uh, way of you know tracking it. But it's not capable. That's it. You know, I, I'm sitting here looking like, is there something else to do? And there's just not. <laughs> it's just super simple. So, all right. So now, as you see, I have the one point, I have the Moto Tag, and I have the Pebbly Clip all in the app, and. You know, when I go on my trip next month, I'll be able to track and monitor all of these. 
So what I plan on doing is actually putting this on here. So I have all three of these together. So I have the Pebble Bee, I have the Samsung Smart Things, and then of course the Chipolo. They're all just regular Bluetooth GPS trackers. None of these have ultra wide band that is uh, on the device. They don't support it. The Moto Tag is the only device that actually has the ultra wide band capability, but Google has not implemented it yet, so it's not functional. So it's kind of a moot point at this time until they actually get it enabled. But again, I have no way of attaching this to anything because there's no hole. So when I actually go on my trip, I'm just going to place it in the luggage somewhere. So that way they'll all be kind of in the same piece of luggage. Because I'll be curious to see how accurately they're tracking, knowing they're all in the same piece of luggage. I know when I went to Barbados and I did my first test, I had the Pebble Bee tracking like crazy location, even though it was on the same ring as the original Smart Tag. Smart Tag was reporting pretty close to where it was, but the Pebble Bee was like, I don't know. One at one point he was even off in the ocean somewhere. I don't know how I even got there. But you know, very inaccurate at times. So we'll see. We'll see how these all compare. Again, they're all going to be in the same piece of luggage. And so I'll know where it's at. And I'll be able to see how accurate each one is tracking. So now we have Chipolo, Samsung Smart Tag Original, Pebble B Clip, Moto Tag from Motorola, and then I have the Samsung Smart Tag 2. I don't have one to actually hold and show you because they're in their little devices actually attached to the luggage right now. So <laughs> I can't actually pull that off and take a look at it. But you can go check out this video here and you can see what the Smart Tag 2 looks like and how well it functions because it functioned perfect. And go check out this video right here where I did my original test when I went to Barbados. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.